Today I'm out here in Nevada taking a look at the 2019 Ram 2500 and Ram 3500, the latest redesign of Ram's heavy duty series of trucks. Now there has been a little bit of confusion as to whether this is a refresh or a redesign. I will let you all decide that down there in your comment section below. But in my opinion, this is a redesign of the Ram 1500 because there are some big changes underneath the body. We have an entirely new frame. We have new engines under the hood, new transmission changes as well. And the only thing that really carries over from the last generation 2500 and 3500 are the beds out back and of course the sheet metal in the cab itself. The interior is completely different versus the last generation model. The big thing to know is that for the 2019 calendar year, this is the first new heavy duty pickup truck to make it to market, but we will be seeing the new Silverado 2500 and 3500 and a serious refresh of the Ford F250 and F350 also coming later this year. No three quarter ton or one ton pickup truck would be complete these days without a massive front end. You can really see how big this new generation of heavy duty pickup trucks are. We have LED headlamps up front in the model that we're driving right here. And a nice touch is well-integrated parking sensors down below on the front bumper that are not cut out of the metal bumper itself. So they've actually strategically located them right here around this lamp module and then right up front there as well in that lower air grill. Although EPA fuel economy estimates are not required in vehicles this heavy, FCA tells us that they have focused on overall fuel efficiency because that is a key part of heavy duty trucks like this where folks are gonna be driving 20, 30, maybe even 40,000 miles a year. That's a lot of fuel being consumed. So they have installed active grill shutters on all models in order to help improve overall heating performance. It'll get you up to temperature faster in the winter. And of course it will help overall fuel economy on those long boring highway runs as well. The most noticeable change under the hood for 2019 is that we no longer get the 5.7 liter Hemi. It's been replaced by a 6.4 liter Hemi V8 that produces 410 horsepower and 429 pound-feet of torque. One of the reasons that Ram decided to upgrade to the 6.4 liter Hemi for the 2019 model is that the upcoming Silverado and Sierra 2500 and 3500 are going to be getting an all new 6.6 liter V8 engine. This engine produces a little bit more horsepower, but a little bit less torque than the new V8 that we see in the General Motors twins. Perhaps more importantly than that, the Ram 6.4 liter V8 engine will still feature FCA's cylinder deactivation system, which they've been using on that engine for quite some time. So I suspect that the Ram 6.4 liter V8 is going to be notably more efficient than the 6.6 that we'll see in the GM vehicles. We don't know too many details yet, but this segment is going to be full of big gasoline engines here soon because Ford has just announced a new 7.3 liter V8. But back to this Ram here, because that is what we're here to talk about. The other engine that we see under this hood is this 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel engine. Although it looks very much the same as the outgoing model, it has been significantly revised for this model year. As before, there are two different power levels for the Cummins turbo diesel, 370 horsepower and 850 pound-feet of torque. That engine is mated to the 68 RFE transmission that was in-house designed by FCA. It has received a few updates for 2019 in order to help handle the increased power. Then we have the 400 horsepower version that produces 1,000 pound-feet of torque. In order to channel all that torque to the ground, they're using an Isen AS69 transmission. That transmission is essentially the same unit that we find in medium-duty trucks like Isuzu box trucks, etc. To get to 1,000 pound-feet of torque, which is king of the hill in this segment at the moment, Cummins took their faithful inline-six engine and tweaked just about everything. Turbochargers, pistons, the oiling system, the cooling system, etc. in order to make sure that it was just as durable as the last model when it's producing 1,000 pound-feet of torque. This still has a very long powertrain warranty. You actually get a longer warranty on the diesel than you do on the gasoline engine. Once that was done, Ram took over and worked with Borg Warner to develop a new transfer case that is right about here underneath the vehicle in order to harness that thousand pound feet of torque and make sure the four wheel drive system didn't shred itself to pieces. And then we get new axles front and rear in addition to upgraded braking because along with the increased torque comes increased towing ability. Now let's talk payload and towing. If you're choosing the 2500 model, which is the model we've been spending a lot of time driving around town today with this trailer attached, then you can expect 4,050 pounds of payload capacity right back here in the bed. Obviously that is when properly equipped, engine selection, the size of the cab, et cetera, will all dictate your final payload ability. But if you choose the right model, you can get over two tons right back here in the bed. And if you choose the correct model, you can tow almost 20,000 pounds, 19,780 pounds to be exact. This particular trailer setup right here has weighed in at just over 11,000 pounds overall. 
Moving up to the Ram 3500 gives you class-leading towing for the moment, 35,100 pounds maximum. The trailer I was able to spend a bit of time in the 3500 towing comes in right at around 21,000 pounds with this Case 570 right on the back of it. Overall payload capacity in the Ram 3500 will go up to 7,680 pounds in the bed, but not in the max towing version. So remember, you will have to decide whether you want the max payload or the max tow. Now we do know that for 2020, the new Silverado HD will actually beat this at 35,500 pounds of towing capacity. At this point in time, I should tell you that the way that FCA and the way that GM did their tests in order to get their final tow ratings is actually a little bit different. In FCA's test, they had more weight in the cab and they were starting from a complete stop, but recent rule changes have allowed manufacturers to test from a rolling start, and that's what GM did with their pickups. So expect FCA at some point over the next year or so possibly to bump the overall tow rating up in the Ram 1500, because if they were testing on the same test method, it would likely have gotten a little bit higher. One of the most important things to remember about towing capacity in modern three quarter ton and one ton pickup trucks is that these will often exceed your actual legal towing ability in many states across the US with a standard non-commercial driver's license. The United States isn't just one rule that covers all states, it is actually a patchwork of different and sometimes very, very confusing numbers. But some states are cut and dry. For instance, in my home state of California, this particular combination would not be legal because on my license category, I would only be able to tow 15,000 pounds maximum with a gooseneck or a fifth wheel. Other states like Texas actually make you do the math. If you have a gross combined weight rating of 26,000 pounds or higher, and that would be the gross vehicle weight rating of the truck, plus the gross weight rating of the trailer, and I'm not talking about actual curb weight, I'm talking about the overall weight rating of the two combined, if that is 26,000 pounds or over, then you need a commercial license in Texas. So keep those patchwork of state laws in mind. And if you wanna be absolutely safe, then check out some of the non-commercial class A licenses or non-commercial other license categories, depending on the state that you're in. Some states offer those, some states don't. And it is definitely an easy way to make sure that you are in compliance when you're towing some heavier weights, especially across state lines. Front seat comfort, I think, falls just a hair below the Ram 1500. Even in the top end trims of 2500 and 3500 for 2019, we don't find four-way adjustable lumbar support, but we do have the two-way variety in this particular seat. In addition to four-way lumbar support, the Super Duty series from Ford features an available seat massage feature, which is something that I really like. Depending on the trim you're shopping for, the passenger seat may have the same range of motion as the driver's seat as it does in this particular model, and we also have a two-position seat memory over there on the door. There are three cab configurations for 2019. We have the regular cab, the crew cab, and the mega cab. The crew cab and mega cab are not too different from one another in terms of actual legroom figures, but the mega cab adds this huge area right here behind the seat, so I can actually recline the rear seats, and they have a pretty decent amount of recline. Seat back moves probably about 10 inches or so. In addition to the seat recline feature, there's also some storage space available back there. I pull a different lever on the side, and then this seat back tilts right like that and folds completely flat with that cargo space behind. So you put large things back here. The trade-off for the extra comfort of the Mega Cab is that the seat bottom cushion does not fold up like it does in the Crew Cab. Over in the Crew Cab, if we fold up the seat bottom cushion and then flip out these tabs, it forms a level cargo area right there for putting larger items in the cab. Or we can flip this up out of the way and actually have access to separate little storage compartments, one under the 60% side and one under the 40% side. For our look around the interior, I have snagged the keys to a Laramie Longhorn. This is one of the co-top end trims of 2500 and 3500. The overall interior options are fairly consistent between the Laramie Longhorn and the Limited trim, although some of what we see in this particular model is optional and then standard on the Limited instead. The driver and front passenger get height adjustable shoulder belts, which is a nice touch, and four-way adjustable headrests. We have Laramie Longhorn right here on this badge. It is laser cut into the leather. We also get some laser cut designs right there on the seat side bolsters on the back and bottom cushion that's meant to mimic cowboy boots. The leather seats are perforated because these seats are both heated and ventilated. If we move over to the front doors, you'll notice one of the vestiges of this not getting a completely new cab design for 2019. The doors themselves are actually a little bit more similar in terms of their overall design to the outgoing 2500 and 3500 model than the new Ram 1500. 
Although the doors remain very similar to the outgoing model, the dashboard is completely different because this dashboard has been essentially borrowed from the Ram 1500 pickup. We have two glove compartments, one right here up top. It's relatively small, but definitely big enough to fit smartphones, even some of the larger smartphones that are available. And then we have a pretty standard sized glove box below that. If you do get one of the lower end trims of the 2500 and 3500, then the glove compartment in the dash becomes just an open storage cubby. Because we're driving the Longhorn model, we have real wood trim on the doors, dashboard, and steering wheel. And then we have laser engraved the Laramie Longhorn Edition logo right there. This is reclaimed barn wood, we're told. We also have some sort of scrolling designs down there at the bottom of that glove box, again to imitate cowboy boots and other uh, sort of Western wear. The overall design has definitely been toned down from the last generation of Laramie Longhorn, and I really like this overall interior design a bit more than the limited pickup truck. I really like that open pour wood there, and the toned down design is definitely more my thing than what we saw before. There's a storage cubby at the top of the center console. This model also gets an optional 17 speaker Harman Kardon sound system, and of course, this large 12 inch infotainment touchscreen that we saw in the Ram 1500. Basically, the same software going on in this model. We have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can use the entire screen for navigation right there. You can see the map, you can pinch and zoom, that sort of thing. This system also includes the climate control functions, media functions, built-in apps right there. We can see the backup cam uh, right here up top. If we were driving the model that had the optional 360 degree camera system, you'd also be able to see that input. The model that we're driving just has the backup camera. We don't have the cargo camera or anything like that. Below the infotainment system, we find the integrated trailer brake controller, a button to lower the rear suspension to make it easier to connect the trailer. That's one of the definite advantages to the air suspension that we have in this model. A button to engage the engine braking function on the diesel, tow haul mode, and separate buttons to turn on and off the front and rear parking sensors. Another really handy touch if you do a lot of towing. If you want to get auxiliary switches, then most of these functions are then replaced by buttons right up top, and then we get a row of auxiliary switches below. Instead of the rotary shift knob over here, we find a column shifter over here on the steering wheel, a little bit above that right there, but we still have the controls for the four-wheel drive system right there and the engine start-stop button. Although this button is inside the Rebel, if you get the regular 2500 or 3500 with the V8 engine, then we get this digital rotary shifter right here instead of the column shifter. The center console is also borrowed essentially from the Ram 1500. We have USB inputs, USB-C and standard USB inputs, CD player right there, places where you can store your smartphones, 120 volt power inverter. Between the front seats, we have a softly padded armrest. Behind that, we have two large cup holders and again, more real wood trim back there. The center console opens in two steps, one with a shallow storage area right there, and then we can open that up and latch it in place. We then have this movable partition in a huge storage compartment down there. You could definitely easily fit very, very large items, large purses, gallons of milk, that sort of thing down there. Doors to cover the cup holders and some other storage cubbies for change, that sort of thing. Definitely a lot of storage area, and again, more of that real wood trim. The instrument cluster is very similar to the outgoing model. This particular trim has the seven inch LCD nestled right there between the speedometer and tachometer. But again, one thing you'll notice is that the overall design of this instrument cluster has been toned down a little bit versus the last generation Longhorn. Specifically, we no longer have the bedazzling right there on those instrument bezels. There's a lot of information going on in this center LCD and it is themed based on the trim of truck that you get. So since we're driving the Longhorn, They've changed the color of things. They've also changed the fonts used, etc. We have a lot of different information here, trailer towing information, vehicle messages, infotainment readouts, the ability to adjust the way the display works, digital speedometer. This display is also where they put additional gauge readouts like coolant temperature, transmission temperature, oil pressure, etc. We also have a boost gauge, diesel particulate filter, lifetime, that sort of thing. And there is a summary screen, which is a really handy one that gives you a lot of that same information all in one view. The steering wheel is the same one that's found on the Ram 1500, but as I said before, it does not telescope, it just tilts. We have real wood trim on the top of the steering wheel, but this is lacquered, it's not an open pour design. The controls for that multifunction display are over here on the left, along with the voice command button and phone button. We have the controls for the optional radar adaptive cruise control over here on the right, and then gear limit buttons down here. We can't command a manual mode, but we can limit the gears that the transmission uses. You'll find the track up down and volume up down buttons on the back of the wheel. 
As always, our typical disclaimer applies. We haven't been able to test this on our own home turf, so we don't have any official scores yet for the 2019 2500 or 2019 3500. But I can say that hopping behind the wheel of a Ram pickup truck in the heavy duty segment versus a General Motors or Ford pickup truck, you'll immediately notice a pretty big difference in the 2500 especially, because the overall ride quality is quite simply better in the Ram pickup truck line. It's thanks to the overall suspension design that we find in the back especially. The coil springs, just like we see in the Ram 1500, really help improve the overall ride, especially if you have a truck that doesn't have much weight in the back. Now right now we're towing a trailer that weighs about 11,000 pounds, we're told, so we have a decent amount of weight on the tongue, and it's really helping soften out the ride in this particular model even more. If you want the optimum in ride comfort, then we do have the availability of that optional air suspension setup. And if you do any kind of serious towing or hauling, that's definitely an option that I would pick. The reason is that it helps improve overall suspension dynamics, not just the ride quality. When towing a trailer, with heavy weight on the back, you're ending up pushing the suspension further down in its travel range, and you don't have as much suspension travel as if the suspension was riding right in the middle of its overall range. By adding airbags to the rear, you can help return the suspension to that optimal ride height location, and it really helps improve the overall ride. That's the same sort of thing that we saw in General Motors small SUVs and their large SUVs over time, but for some reason we only see in the Ram family of pickup trucks. You can get that option in the Ram 1500 where we get a full four corner air suspension, but things are a little bit different with the three quarter ton and one ton trucks. In the 2500, we have a full rear air suspension. They replace the spring with a complete airbag unit that supports the rear suspension entirely and provides some of the damping back there as well. The 3500, which is what we're driving now, is a little bit different. It's a partial air suspension, so we still have the leaf spring in the back, but they can make the leaf spring softer by giving us that airbag, and that's what improves the overall ride quality. The airbag then inflates to give you that maximum payload and towing ability because it is then sharing the weight with the leaf springs that are in the back. To be honest, when it comes to three quarter ton and one ton pickup trucks out on the road, the really big differences are going to be in the creature comforts, the quietness of the ride, etc. Because overall capability is going to be very high in any of this upcoming set of pickup trucks. We have incredible payload and towing figures here in the Ram 2500 and 3500, the Silverado 2500 and 3500, and the F250 and F350 coming later in the year as well. But the overall interior refinement that we find in here is definitely above what we see in the General Motors line of pickup trucks. I've been really disappointed with their interiors overall, especially the top and Denali trims over there in the GMC trucks, which are theoretically supposed to be the premium truck entry in this segment, and they quite simply don't feel as premium as the interiors that we find in the Ram series of pickup trucks. The Ford pickup truck line is getting a pretty significant refresh, but the bones of the vehicle haven't really changed for 2020 or 2019, so we're still seeing the same sort of interior parts quality in that model that we saw before. I think that falls just one semi-step below the Ram. We do find a few luxury features in the top-end Ford trucks that we don't see in the Ram pickup truck lineup, but overall interior parts quality I think is still higher in this cabin. Cabin quietness is definitely something that we've seen significant improvements on in the Ram pickup line, not just in the 1500, but now in the 2500 and 3500 as well. The V8 version of the Ram 2500 and 3500 has kind of an interesting innovation that we also see in the Ram 1500. It's an active tuned mass module, what they're calling it. Basically, it's an active shake weight. Think of it that way. It basically plays out a noise canceling vibration that counteracts the vibrations coming from the V8 engine in the frame of the truck itself. So that way those vibrations never make their way into the cabin. And then after that, we have an active noise canceling system in all versions of the 2500 and 3500, which helps make this cabin very, very quiet. Definitely quieter than we see in most of the competition. So how much will one of these babies set you back? Well, it's gonna start at $34,845 for the base tradesman model. That will get you rear wheel drive, the regular cab, not this bigger cab right here, and an eight foot bed. It'll also get you the 6.4 liter Hemi V8, and that eight-speed automatic transmission. If you want the big horde trim, which is what we're driving right here, that starts at 39,095. Also for the regular cab and the long bed, not the model exactly that we're looking at here. If you want the Laramie, 50,450 is your starting price, and the crew cab becomes standard on Laramie and above. The Longhorn, which is the model that gives you that wood trim on the inside from reclaimed barns, 57,650, and the limited trim, which is the most expensive version, $62,650. None of those will get you the diesel engine, however, which is an extremely high take rate option. More than 60% of Ram 2500s will have at least one of the diesel options under the hood, and when you move on up to the 3500, 90% of the ones that you see out there will have the Cummins turbo diesel.
Now again, there are those two different turbo diesel flavors. If you want the 850 pound-feet of torque model, that's an extra $9,100. If you want the one with the 1,000 pound-feet of torque and the most bragging rights available in the industry, 11,795 is your number. Although these prices are definitely higher than last year, the 2500 and 3500 remain a pretty good deal in the heavy duty truck segment. We get that upgraded 6.4 liter V8 engine, the eight speed automatic transmission, which not all the competition will have. And a really nice touch is that the tradesman version of the 2500 will be able to have some of the advanced safety systems that we don't even find available at any price in the Silverado and Sierra lineup. For instance, you can get radar adaptive cruise control even in that base model, and adaptive cruise control is just not offered at all in the Silverado and Sierra for some reason. Another nice touch with the Tradesman model is that we can also get the optional air suspension in the back in that Tradesman trim, and that is a really handy feature overall. It's something that I would definitely get in the 2500 and 3500 if you're planning on towing those heavier weights. It not only helps improve the overall ride capability when the vehicle is unladen, but it also helps improve overall towing ability and towing feel when the vehicle has a lot of weight either in the bed or a lot of tongue weight on the back because you're towing something. That's been our quick look at the new 2500 and 3500 trucks from Ram. Be sure and hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of our latest videos, including a full review on this just as soon as we can get one back home and run it through our usual battery of tests. Also be sure and sound off down there in the comment section below and let me know what you think about the 2019 Ram Heavy Duty trucks and what you would get if you were shopping in this segment at the moment. I really like the new 6.4 liter V8 engine and of course we have that 1000 pound feet of torque which is the ultimate bragging right in this particular segment. Overall towing ability may actually exceed this in the new upcoming Silverado Heavy Duty trucks but it's only going to beat this by about 400 pounds so it's not really a huge deal. We don't know exactly what Ford has up their sleeves for the new F-250 and F-350 coming later this year, but we do know that they're going to get a new 7.3 liter V8 gasoline engine, which I think is a very exciting option in this particular segment. Again, let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section below, and I'll see you next week.